Infinite Green, and uh, I, uh, I'm from Hinsdale, and have been here for, well, I won't say how long, it's probably a longer than you've been alive <laughs> in that place. But I think uh, what you're doing with the STEM, uh, STEM uh, is so important, and I do serve on the, the science uh, committee with Representative Lipinski, and of course energy is, is so important to us, and also has started a uh, caucus building, uh, high, the High Performance Buildings Caucus, and that really is the dream to make sure that, and, and what a caucus is, is a bipartisan group here, and we uh, have uh, meet maybe once a month or once a quarter, depending on the caucus, and it's to really uh, look at all the ways that, uh, that we can make this country more green, and with the buildings in particular, and uh, just one story about that, you know, there's a, uh, the Quaker House over near the, over near the, uh, the Senate side, and they took two buildings that were older buildings, put them together, and then made everything that they could as green, like having a, a geothermal uh, for the heating and air conditioning, and that's where you go down into the ground, and, and so you don't really need any fuel. It's a little expensive when you start out because you've got to, if, particularly if the building is already there, you've got to dig out the basement and put all this in. But in all, they they have actually when they they did it, they have so you can see how it works. And they've got glass around it, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, and then what the carpet and all that. But uh, I know that you, who, have you all been working on nuclear? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nuclear is really my passion and how important it is. And uh, we have Argonne National Lab in the district. And so that the nuclear is, um, is to really provide And I think that we've been pretty slow in doing this. Uh, we're not on the issue we mentioned for the long time. When, uh, president, when the president was President Bush, uh, I, I made it my, my uh, goal was to make sure that he would talk, talk about this, put it in the State of the Union, and uh, make sure that we were progressing with the recycling so that, in other words, instead of just having all this nuclear waste, to recycle it, reburn, and reburn it so that we don't have so much waste and it doesn't last as long. So I, I, I said, every time I saw the president, I was going to talk to him about it. So the first time was actually out in Caterpillar. Caterpillar. So I went out, uh, he was there, and I went out, and I said, Mr. President, think nuclear. And he said, oh, Judy, I never could pronounce that word. <laughs> I said, no, 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 it's not, you know, he's always had a problem with some of the pronunciation of words. And so I got a big kick out of that. But I did do this. By the time of the State of the Union, he did come forward and say, it was called GNAP, that they were really going to work on the nuclear, work on the, on the recycling. And, but it's, it's still, it's very slow to do that, and it really is a shame. We, I think we have the first permit uh, has been applied for to build a new nuclear plant in this country, which has been so long. And I've been out to Braden. Have you been out there? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. And, uh, and right next door is the GNAP. Processing uh, plant that was built there. There were six in the country, and they were all sh shut down by the president. And, and this was like a time warp going back to see this uh, building. Uh, most of the equipment had been taken out, but it's now used as, as a, the pools for, for nuclear uh, waste. So it was really like going back in time. So keep up the work about this about nuclear, because with all the alternative energies, and, and I actually <coughs> have worked with all of them on the science committee. It's so important to have the nuclear because all the the alternatives are, are great, but they're not going to be able to you know to do it all. Uh, the wind, soul, solar, uh, hydro, and whatever. So so keep up the good work. And doing that. And with that, I mean, I think that we've got some good people here, not just another scientist. So um, I'm a lawyer, but I really care. <laughs>
car down, they wouldn't let me drive it off of the premises, unfortunately. <laughs> because the car is too valuable, but I might have an accident. So, uh, so we really worked to, to make sure that, that this happens. And, uh, and the STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math are so important. And we're so fortunate to have a program like this to be able to, to get a head start on that. We need, uh, we need more engineers, we need more scientists, This is the role that, that we're going to play in this in, in the world. Is we have got to have the, uh, the technology to stay ahead and really be able to compete in the, in the global economy. And we will make that happen. Thank you. Uh, one more member. The other, I've been co-chair of the STEM Education Caucus in the House. With the other uh, co-chair, uh, Representative Roscoe Bartlett. Every 15 hours, there's another uh, billion dollar increase in our trade deficit. And this year, the uh, Chinese will graduate seven times as many engineering students as we graduate. And about half of our engineering uh, graduates are Chinese students. Uh, these two uh, statistics are, are related. Uh, one of the reasons that we have this huge trade deficit is because the Chinese are graduating seven times as many engineering students as we are, and because we just aren't doing much of this kind of thing in our country, which is why it's hard to go to a store to buy something made in America. So what you're doing is enormously important to the security of our country, to the economic future of our, of our country. I talk to young people and ask them what they're going to be doing. And increasingly, uh, they're raising their hands saying they're going to become lawyers and political scientists. I'm glad that he has gone. I think we have, she's a very nice lady. <laughs> uh, we have quite enough lawyers, thank you, uh, in, in, in our country. And what we desperately need are scientists, mathematicians, and engineers so that we can compete in a world that's increasingly uh, 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 technical. When was the last time that the White House invited a, an academic achiever there and slobbered all over them the way they do sports figures and entertainers? A culture gets what it appreciates. And the truth is, our culture just does not appreciate you if you're interested in science, math, and technology. If you're a bright young man, uh, they call you a geek or a nerd. When I was growing up, we were squares. I guess that's kind of uh, okay. Now, is it, you know what a square is? That's it. Today's geek and nerd. And pretty girls won't date these bright boys, and a really bright girl plays dumb to get a date. Wow. What could be dumber for a culture than to have to play dumb? And, and, and that, uh, that's where we are. And it's no accident that uh, comparing our graduates from uh, the 12th grade with graduates across the industrialized world that we're bringing up to here. A bit ago, there were 21 countries tested, and we were very thankful for it for uh, Cyprus and Sri Lanka, because they're the only two countries whose kids lag behind ours. For 24, well, more than that now, for the first 24 years after the Federal Department of Education was put in place, our SAT scores dropped year by year. But I have no idea if that was a cause and effect relationship. But wherever you have a positive correlation, you suspect a cause effect relationship, and you look for it. In any event, our Federal Department of, Edu of Education has obviously done nothing to improve performance in our country because in spite of all of its efforts and all of its regulations, the, the performance scores remain down. We're bumping along in the basement now. We try very hard, throwing more money at educating our kids in any other country in the world, and they're still banging on the bottom. And I think one of the primary reasons is that we just don't appreciate people who go into these disciplines. The last time that we had something in our country that captured the imagination of our people and inspired our young people is when we and we had a decade to do it. We did it less than a decade, put a man on the moon. I remember a cartoon. I thought that said it all. It was a young a kid with a buck tooth, red, uh, freckled faced kid. He said, six months ago, I couldn't even spell engineer, and now I are one. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody wanted to be into this, into this technology. It was very inspiring. We need, we need to do that again. The thing that you're focusing on alternative energy, it, it's not, this is not just an option. It's an absolute requirement. We will transition 
from fossil fuels to alternative energy because fossil fuels are finite. They will not last forever. The only question is, when will that transition ultimately occur? It started in our country in 1970. We reached our maximum oil production in 1970. Today, we produce half the oil we did in 1970. Fortunately, the rest of the world was not at that point, so we could get oil from them. We get now with two-thirds of our oil, about two-thirds of our oil from overseas. So the alternative energy thing is not just something that's green, something that's an absolute essential. We're going to transition there. If you're wildly optimistic about all the alternatives to oil, they can't even come close to 84 million barrels a day. So what Judy was saying, we need to look to nuclear. Amen. We also need to look at, at, an, at a structure where we can live happily with less energy. The average European uses half the energy we do, and it's hard to argue that they aren't as happy as we are. So thank you all very much for what you're doing. We have a challenging future. We're happy you're going to be there to help us. Thank